Welcome to the Ghost Stories YouTube channel. Here, we will bring you the scariest experiences through ghost stories, mysteries, and inexplicable mysteries of the mysterious world. Whether you are someone who enjoys learning about ghost stories or simply looking for a new entertainment experience, our channel will be the ideal destination. Join us in the horror space and get ready for the most tense and scary moments. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you for joining the Ghost Stories YouTube channel, and now, get ready for some spooky moments with us. 7 Freaky Nights Chapter 1, The First Night, Bookcase on the Balcony On the first weekend of winter, late at night made the whole city lose the hustle and bustle of the daytime. At that moment, there was a cold atmosphere. On the road, I occasionally saw a few people passing by. A gust of wind blew through the leaves on the side of the road. In the deep blue sky, a few lonely clouds floated. The dim moonlight shined down on the trees in the distance, faintly heard the sound of people talking about the architecture of that old house. An ancient building with four floors in Japanese style. Mold covered the wall thickly. The creeping plants are no longer able to recognize the shape of the wall. This shows that the house has a history of up to 60 or 70 years. This building is much older, but from the construction materials and exterior appearance of the building it still says, in its glory days, this must have been the villa of a powerful person. After all these years, it's easy to understand why the building turned into such a deserted area. No matter how much gold, silver, or wealth, it is difficult to preserve. After the accident, the building was occupied by a unit as a residential area for workers. In an instant, more than 30 households moved into the building. The large door in the middle of the building is made of marble. The stairs are made from premium wood so after decades of history they can still be used. But every time someone passes by, the creaking sound resounds. When there are a few people going up and down, it's really deafening. According to the city's development, this residential area has become a noisy neighborhood. But with such an appearance, the building feels out of place in the modern landscape of the city. The fate of this land was to be bought by an unknown owner. They planned to build a high-rise building to serve as a supermarket after 10 months there. Because of that project, the households that had been here for a long time slowly moved out, leaving only a few recent graduates remaining. Because the rent is cheap and they are in no hurry to move somewhere else. The first students to move here were only Truongkiat and Vuongdo. Not long after, they introduced themselves to their friends and a few more young people moved in together. At the foot of the stairs is littered with trash left behind by previous residents when they moved out. And if someone passes here at night, going up the stairs, they will definitely hear sounds that sound like people grinding their teeth, making it difficult to avoid feeling creepy. The first floor has a small room where the households here store things. There is also a room that looks like it has been empty for a long time. According to the previous owner of the house, someone died there, so almost no one goes there anymore. The door was pushed back by spider webs. Every time Buongdo passed by, he looked back and forth, not because he was afraid, but because he was very curious. Last weekend, Truonkiat sat in his room, went online to waste time, opened QQ Chinese chat network but there was no one online, looking a bit disappointed. A few seconds later, the penguin's beeping sound announced that someone had left a message. He absent-mindedly opened QQ to see the news. The text message made him curious because it was from a strange nick with the content now I come to find you. He rummaged through his friend's list to find out whose message it was from, but to no avail. There is no contact to find any clues. In addition, the person who sent the message didn't text anything anymore, which is strange. 
Besides his classmates and close friends, no one has come to look for him lately. I can't figure out who the owner of the message is. Truonkiat thought to himself, never mind, and did not inquire further. Even if his friends came, they would call, so he turned back to focus on other things. Vuongtho was bored and came to find Truonkia to sit and talk. Vuongtho is naturally very interested in spiritual things, especially things of the spirit and ghost type. Just mentioning this topic makes him talk endlessly, the two of them talk about everything from ghost movies to Japanese horror stories, etc. What are mountain ghosts, stream ghosts, hungry ghosts? They talk about all sorts of strange and ghostly stories. The four directions are calm and attractive, making everyone curious. Young people like them with rich imaginations like to explore adventure and horror. Thatch Enum gave a suggestion, it's all about wasting time so why don't we organize a horror society club? Every weekend we gather to hear someone tell their favorite ghost story, and members are limited to the residents of this building. Like drought and rain, the idea was supported by everyone, with a total of seven members. The first few ideas given to make the atmosphere of the storytelling sessions more mysterious include, closing the door, turning off the lights, in the dark room, everyone listens to classic ghost stories. Little did the little girls and boys know that the day they gathered together would also be the day the mysterious true story that would happen to them would begin. On that night, Truonkiat's room on the fourth floor was tightly closed, it was dark inside, the club of weird people had its first activity. All members are present. The atmosphere in the room became even more eerie as the members whispered greetings to each other and then fell into silence. A little pale light from the moonlight shining in from the porch made everything look mysterious. Outside, the shadow of the birch tree leaned against the building like an exponential progression of the gloomy scene, making everyone feel the cold, spine-tingling desolation. The wind gently blew the leaves, two cowardly girls, Ha Tudin and Tri Yu Dukedin, held each other's hands tightly, exuding resignation as they sat looking around. It was chilly at night and the two of them also discovered that their friends' hands were also cold. Fortunately, the room was dark so we couldn't see each other's pale faces, which was less embarrassing. Everyone felt panic in their hearts. Buongdo is the person who likes to tell stories the most. He cleared his throat and said, Horror Association coming into operation is a very important event for a fan like me, so I won't miss the opportunity to serve you. Interesting thrilling stories from when I was a student sitting in a university lecture hall. At that time, I was a fourth year student, spending all four years in the dormitory. Oh, so let's not talk about the poor living conditions. At that time, when I was preparing to write my thesis, I came home late every day, so I was often locked outside the dormitory door. Because of that, also for work convenience, I went out with a few friends to rent a room. As soon as I moved into the new room, I was startled by the landlord's old bookshelf. At that time, my hands were respectfully holding a large box filled with comics and magazines that my friends abroad had sent me. I still don't know where to put it. Because it's true that I've seen them over and over again, I'm not sure I'll touch them in the near future, but it would be a shame to throw them away, after all, these magazines aren't easy to read. Purchasable no matter what anyone wants to laugh at, just laugh at me and I will still send them. At this point, I'm just like my great-grandfather, I often feel sorry for my three torn and tattered clothes and I always take care of them wherever I go. I walked around the house and saw that for five people, three bedrooms and a living room were a bit cramped. But it will be more serious when all five people are disruptive. Then I opened the balcony door, and in the blink of an eye I saw that right in the dust pile was a bookcase. 
That's not entirely accurate, but rather I found a door of a cabinet. The other side was blocked by an upright boat. Both of these tattered items are old and discarded items. I immediately went to take a look, thinking maybe it could be used for something else. I walked into the balcony and vaguely noticed a shadow of a person. I frantically turned around and immediately saw a mysterious smile. There was indeed someone on the left balcony. I was startled for a moment, calmed down and saw that it was just a shadow of a person. Because there was a very large mirror and inside it appeared my own image. But because the mirror was too old and dirty, the image became distorted and patchy. Why would anyone put a mirror this big here it can only see this old bookshelf? Thinking so, I didn't pay any more attention to that mirror and went straight to the bookshelf, putting the books on the ground first. Looking at the carvings on the cabinet door, this is a very outdated cabinet. The partitions were broken, the mirrors were broken, and inside were a bunch of old newspapers. This bookshelf was indeed quite old. When I opened the drawer, a shiver appeared, it felt uncomfortable at all, as if a mouse was crawling over my leg. It's just a cupboard, why is it so cold I thought to myself, in the middle of the summer everything is hot, but this refrigerator exudes freezing cold air. I slowly opened the closet door. Creaky, it looks like this door is starting to fall apart. The smell of mold was so unpleasant that I had to turn around and walk away, suddenly stepping on a pile of newspapers and falling down. There was indeed a shadow in that closet, a small person with bright eyes glaring at me. At this time, my two classmates, Buong and Hyo and Ho Si Ha, stared at the closed cardboard box with a bored expression. I realized that when moving things to a new house, people still feel a little excited, but when the house is finished, the remaining feeling is infinite fatigue. After all that fatigue, Ho Si Ha decided to temporarily be a lazy chicken. Let's figure out what's going on tomorrow. Let's think about resting today. Go out tonight and take a tour to see if there's any interesting place to drink around here. Vuong and Hyo spoke up, that's the end. Just saying I'm tired, I have the spirit of partying. It's so unrealistic, less nonsense, go and clean up the box. Reluctantly, Ho Si Ha picked up the beautiful knife and prepared to work. My scream echoed from the balcony, startling the two of them. Ho Si Ha almost cut himself. The two of them quickly rushed to the balcony. Tran Ho Hui and Quang Fuang, who were in the living room, heard this and rushed up. Immediately five men crowded together on the crowded balcony. Seeing that there was nothing wrong, Ho Si Ha rolled his eyes at me, angrily bit my leg and said, you're just different from a wooden person, why are you screaming do you know that I almost cut my hand men are so big, but my liver isn't much bigger than a cat's liver. In fact, in the drawer is a wooden statue. It was half as tall as a real person, no wonder I mistook it for a human in the dark, I was stunned. I also didn't pay much attention to other people's laughter because it was obvious that it was just looking at me. Could it be that my eyes were dizzy I took a closer look and the statue appeared to be the face of an old man with rough skin and a normal face, especially his hazy eyes containing many uncertainties. Quang Fuang very heroically reminded him of the statue, this toy was so unique, and he played it so recklessly. If that statue were to fall, it could really cause Vuong those leg to swell. Could it be that he is not afraid amid everyone's laughter, I found myself a bit embarrassed. I also wanted to say something but I honestly didn't know what to say. Buong Kui proudly teased me. You're tongue-tied, aren't you you just have to stay calm and not get scared if anything happens to the game, boy. Quang Fuang was delighted. Me. Do you remember how in freshman year we ran into the forest with boars pretending to be ghosts to scare the girls I wouldn't dare? 
Vuong and Hu interrupted the slanderous words. Okay, okay. We've heard the story of your miracle more than two hundred times. I was thinking that this piece of wood is actually quite special. I'll leave it in my room. Kuang Fuang smiled meaningfully. What are you planning on turning into a god statue who knows, maybe it will be the god of wealth. After speaking, he took the wooden statue and gave it to Vuong and Hu. He caught it without thinking it was intentional. Kuang Fuang laughed loudly and pushed the statue into Vuong and Hu's arms. Bring it and burn incense. After a while of stewing, the group dispersed. I stayed on the balcony for a while, thinking back to the statue's eyes from before. A random feeling that I'm not paranoid at all. Why did you leave the wooden man locked up and locked up the more I think about it, the more I see that this homeowner is a strange person. Having calmed down, I looked again at the bookcase. Looking at it, it's not what I thought it would be. This book has many small partitions. If we don't open the remaining door, we won't be able to hold many things. I saw a rather large fish tank inside. I know I'm wasting my time and energy on useless things. But I thought I'd just stick this fish tank under the mirror. Walking off the balcony, I met Kuang Fuang dragging Vuong and Hu with her. It's a waste of a mirror this big to put on the balcony. Kuang Fuang nodded. Then put it in the living room during the day so we can look at each other. But don't put it on the opposite side of the door. It's my room. Vuong and Hu. Mirrors are also talismans. It can prevent everything from being unclean, blocking negative energy from entering our room. Kuang Fuang turned his head and didn't pay attention. It's okay to put it opposite my room. The most regrettable thing in my life is that I have never met a devil. If the devil appeared in front of me even once, it would be considered as having nothing to regret. Exorcism I suddenly turned my head and looked at the bookcase. I started to feel the cold air spreading so I quickly left the balcony, only hearing behind me the sound of two people whispering about the placement of the mirror. The five of us at that time also established an animation gallery. The whole group studied art and loved drawing, especially cartoons. But none of us are willing to settle down and accept life. Starting a business promises great success. We all reward ourselves for being bosses. In the early days, we were very excited and moved near the city center to rent a two-story room to prepare a spacious property. After a few months, we also discovered that our finances were in a tight situation, customers were few and far between, and our income was getting less and less. I can't afford to maintain that big beautiful office anymore. Luke couldn't help but move his office to a new place. Although it is a bit far away, the office can also play the role of a small house. The newly rented room in the dormitory number 402 is still okay. The homeowner is a rather poor person. While worrying about college tuition fees for his son, his father passed away. The house is therefore redundant. Tran Ho Hui and I came to check the situation and saw that the owner of this house didn't know much about the house. Because there are many questions we cannot answer. So Tran Ho Hui's suspicions could not be avoided. He whispered. Is he a scammer? The homeowner immediately guessed our suspicions, so he awkwardly explained. His father was an eccentric person, not only his neighbors but also his niece did not want to interact with him. Just because he respected his father's wishes, he agreed to let his father be alone. So that's it, the two of us are somewhat less worried. Looking through the room, all conditions are okay. The rent is also reasonable, but the room is too dirty, with bird feathers, crates, carved tree corners, pebbles. This old man collects furniture in a variety of colors and quantities. Diverse. 
The homeowner calmed us down, don't worry, everything will be cleaned up in just a moment. We decided to rent that house. Within a few days, the moving company's car came to take all our belongings to our new home. In the early days, a lot of things happened to us, not only the bookcase but other things also made us unhappy. When Quang Fuang was instructing the company's staff to clean the house, a slightly skinny looking 30 year old man proactively walked over to ask. Hello. You just moved in. Quang Fuang yes. Are you also in this building? The thin man said, I'm in the building next door, room 301. What about you guys? Quang Fuang 402. As soon as she finished speaking, Quang Fuang saw the man's face change. He seemed very surprised. He was stunned for a moment and then asked. Is that the room of the strange old man who just died? Quang Fuang yes, there was an old man here before. The man regained his normal expression and after a long while lamented, you guys should be careful there to avoid any accidents. Letting go of his unfinished sentence, the man walked away. At night, cleaning the house made us tired, so we ordered a few boxed lunches, then sat together at the dining table. Turning around and smiling at me, Quang Fuang told everyone about the skinny man this morning. Buong and Hu was a little nervous, who knows, maybe there's something wrong with this room someone just died, so the rent is cheap. Quang Fuang waved her hands, it's not true, how can you believe those words it's a myth. Ho Si Ha continued, who knows, maybe that man has a problem of making up ghosts to scare the neighbors. I sat silently thinking about the bookshelf, the bookshelf. The large mirror on the balcony is now placed in the living room, and the wooden statue cleaned by Vuong and Hu is placed in his room. Amidst everyone's gossip, I still didn't understand why when I saw the bookshelf my spine felt cold. That whole night I couldn't sleep, the weather was so hot, outside the window a stray cat called out to you. After tossing and turning for a long time, I fell asleep. There were three bedrooms and a spacious living room. Even after lying there for an hour, I still felt the atmosphere was stuffy. I no longer knew what heaven and earth were when I suddenly woke up. I wanted to sit up and stretch my arms and legs for a while, but my whole body felt like it was wrapped tightly. The limbs moved and immediately touched something hard. I tried my best to push that strange object away but couldn't push it away. I regained my composure and tried again but it was still useless, I was locked in a wooden box. But what is it? really wooden crates or coffins, at the same time, give off a rotten smell. It's the same smell I smelled this morning. The bookshelf, I'm locked in the bookshelf. Goosebumps spread all over my body, the hair on my neck stood up, my heart pounded, all the scary images covered my panicked thoughts. I'm locked in a bookcase. It's the bookcase. I tried my best to get out of here. But in this cramped position, I'm really helpless. The panic and rapid breathing echoed in this damn bookcase. Help me. Help me. I screamed without my throat making any sound. All around was still pitch black night. Besides this cramped feeling and this foul smell, I have no other feelings. In the panic, I felt the feeling of weakness from before. An eight-year-old boy struggled in the water with no way to regain his balance. In the vast sea of water, I can understand what despair is. Finally woke up, this time for real. I have never been more grateful for waking up than I am this time. I forced myself to get up and turn on the light. I couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief and didn't dare to go back to sleep. Looking at the clock, it was only 3 in the morning, but I felt like I had been locked in that bookshelf for days and nights. I looked like I had just been picked up from the water. 
My whole body was drenched in sweat. I grabbed a towel and wiped my face but my heart was still pounding with fear. Opening the door, I was about to take a shower when I heard a rustling sound on the balcony. I immediately thought of that ghostly bookshelf. I ran frantically back to my room, not even daring to take a shower. Just like that, the night passed. It was finally morning, I slept a little more peacefully. After a tiring night when I laid down, I felt like a stone. I no longer heard the sound of Quang Fuang knocking on the door. Quang Fuang woke up, it was already 10 o'clock but he clearly set the clock last night. Set at 9 o'clock in the morning, the ancient clock has to be wound every day to ring. But its sound is extremely loud. Several roommates tried to trade with him several times, but he refused. This is a souvenir from the day my parents fell in love. It means a lot to me. Quang Fuang added. If the alarm clock doesn't go off, how can it wake everyone up? That morning the clock didn't ring to wake Quang Fuang, making him irritable. Maybe it's time for it to go bad. Are you just coming here? When I tried to take the watch to get it repaired, I found it was gone. It's no longer under the pillow. This is strange, Quang Fuang clearly remembers that he personally put the watch under his pillow last night. While he was in a daze, his head still touched it. Why don't you see it now I searched carefully but still couldn't find it. I even crawled down to look under the bed and couldn't find it. He went to Tran Ho Hui in the same room and asked. So the answer is don't know. Asking the two people in the next room, no one knew anything. At this time, Vuong and Hyu also angrily said that she lost her socks. He swore that he had just taken out a pair of clean socks and hung them on the chair next to the bed, but now they were gone. In just the first night of arriving at the new house, two items were lost. It really made me so angry. Everyone searched every corner but found nothing. Quang Fuang noticed my room door was still locked. Tran Ho Hui shook his head, saying that I wasn't that petty, and besides, if that was the case, then why would I be rich it wouldn't be worth it to hide a pair of socks. If it were me at least it would be a phone. Everyone sees that this statement is not unreasonable. Quang Fuang was not willing and still wanted my heart to ask again for the corn and potatoes. But no matter how much he knocked on the door, there was no movement in the room, only the sound of sleeping, so he had to leave. Quang Fuang helplessly complained, he really sleeps like a pig. I slept straight until afternoon. All of my colleagues went to their place and turned on their computers to work. Recently we had some small business, making a set of designs about hero comics. The bookstore requires it to be Japanese style, so the job is not urgent unless it takes a few days to clean the house. Therefore, we must urgently complete the plan. Now that I've just woken up, I can't help but feel embarrassed because of my laziness. After eating some bread and milk, greeting her colleagues, Quang Fuang waited for someone to come and immediately ask about the lost item, but unfortunately I didn't know what to ask. Quang Fuang cursed, what the hell is going on then said nothing more. Watches and socks aren't worth anything and they're gone. The house is haunted. I still feel uneasy thinking about last night and the sound echoing from the balcony. Could it still be related to the bookshelf I intended to tell Quang Fuang but was afraid of being ridiculed by him, so I didn't say it anymore, keeping it to myself. Quang Fuang bought a new watch, Vuong and Hyu changed to another pair of socks, everything was as if it had never happened. Ho Si Ha suggested, maybe tomorrow the clock will chime somewhere. Quang Fuang was not happy at all, saying, each winding can only be used once. I also don't have nightmares anymore. Every day I just know how to reassure myself. 
see if anyone else lost anything, but for three days in a row nothing happened, it seems like the night of losing something was just a coincidence, or maybe it was because the two of them remembered wrongly or mixed up. Wobbly. I therefore feel more secure. Work is also favorable and leads to success. The partner was very happy and promised to pay in half a month, everything went well. But after a few days, I lost something again, this time it was Tran Ho Hui's perfume bottle. Ho Si Ha just met a girl online. Today was his first date, but he has one weakness, his body smells bad. Afraid of giving her a bad impression. Tran Ho Hui I have a bottle of perfume I haven't used yet. Take it and give it to Ho Si Ha to use to flirt. But when I looked, I couldn't find it. Tran Ho Hui was stunned. Obviously I put it in a drawer, but when I moved house I still found it here, now it's gone. Ho Si Ha also looked for help but couldn't find it so he had to leave. In the evening, Ho Si Ha returned with a frown, the meeting did not seem to go as expected. We couldn't help but talk about the missing item. Quang Fuang said, a few days ago, we didn't know we lost anything, but it was most likely due to losing things we didn't use often so no one paid attention. Now everyone will take a closer look. Rummaging through his belongings, he discovered that a few more items were missing. Quang Fuang lost his favorite CD. Ho Si Ha lost an important postcard. Vuong and Hu also felt that something was missing. They asked me, me, I lost one of my earrings. All of us gathered here felt very strange. Up to now we have not lost any money or anything of value. But that means they are all items that have been and are being used. We all lost something. That's all nonsense. Normally, when there's no one in the room, there's no one left but this time because it looked like Soho was like everyone was at home all day, someone dared to take things away right under our noses. Ho Si Ha said, or did you encounter someone with a perverted mentality who deliberately made up a story? Ha inherently likes reading detective stories, so when something happens, she immediately thinks of something unusual. Buong and Hu also said, it could be an animal that likes to carry small items and hide them somewhere, such as a bird, monkey, or something like that. It's very possible, there's a perverted person who has a bird in their heart, or a monkey that steals from us. Quang Fuang's voice was mixed with anger. That bird or monkey can also be invisible, can enter the house through the security door, or can open the door to enter the house without being detected by us. Speaking of this, we see that the owner of this house is clearly an unusual person. Installing a security door that screwed, weird, and ugly, the security net is tiny, tight, and has three locks. Quang Fuang asked me Vuong though, do you have any comments? I listened for a moment, awkwardly answering, I don't know anymore, I don't know why I lost my things either. Quang Fuang looked at me curiously, are you okay your face doesn't look well. I. I have a bit of a stomach ache, I'm going to go lie down and rest for a while, after saying that I stood up and went to my room. Do I need to take medicine heard Tran Ho Hui calling after him. But I couldn't hear anything he said clearly, so I just closed the door. Why am I the only one who doesn't lose anything I lay down on the bed and my whole body felt like I was sweating. Are these things related to me I have a premonition that something is confusing my thoughts, like there are rocks blocking the flow of water, blocking my flow of thoughts, making my spirit restless. But I can't make that obsession go away, this constant feeling is truly painful. But what am I afraid of before I went to sleep? I thought about what had been chasing me and making me uneasy all this time. Bookshelves Related to the bookshelf Two days later, the belongings of the five of them continued to go missing one after another. 
but I still don't lose anything. I've wanted to open the bookshelf's drawer several times to check. I don't know why, but I don't have that courage. But that bookshelf was finally opened. That day, Hoseha's cell phone was lost. The Nokia 3230 has just been purchased for two months. If it were to be lost, it would be truly heartbreaking. Hoseha repeatedly dialed his phone number, did not turn off the phone. We all searched the room, straining our ears to listen. Buong and Hu heard the ringtone Beiji carrying his wife coming from the balcony. The whole group ran to the balcony to hear clearly. That sound was indeed coming from the bookshelf. Hoseha hung up the phone and rushed to the balcony, angrily kicking the closet door. Who would have thought that this old cabinet would be so sturdy, without any trace of damage? However, it almost broke Hoseha's leg. Tran Ho Hui opened the door, his phone was still flashing, indicating a missed call. Under the phone are watches, socks, perfume and all. Full of things that people have lost during the past time. What a devilish bookshelf. I felt like I was spinning and quickly raised my hand to hold onto the wall. The belongings were found again, and everyone has since been much happier. No one noticed that I didn't go into the closet to get the lost items. I was relieved. The next problem was to research how our belongings got into that closet. This time, Kuang Fuang himself denied his previous opinion. It's also strange, could it be that there is an animal that likes to take these trifles and hide them? Buong and Hyo could it be a mouse maybe the old man of the house used to like to train mice to be spoiled? Tran Ho Hui but the furniture is also in the drawer, how can the mouse get out debating all day without finding any reasonable explanation? Ho Si Ha suddenly patted his head, I remember a story but I'm not sure if it's related to our story. Ho Si Ha began telling about two Antarctic explorers who were surrounded by a snowstorm in a storm shelter, and had to take turns standing outside each day to send out emergency signals. But the snow was strong and the wind was strong, so no one came to save them. The person in charge of sending the signal for help had a fever and became increasingly weak. That morning, one of the explorers woke up to discover that his companion had passed away. He could only bury his friend under the snow. At dawn the next day, the explorer opened his eyes to see his friend sitting on a chair, in a position to telegraph for help. The explorer was amazed. But I'm glad my friend isn't dead yet. But when I got closer, I saw that it was just a cold corpse. The explorer was horrified but didn't understand why he took the body to bury it. On the third day, the body appeared again, still with the same appearance. Every day in the following days, every time the explorer woke up, he saw his friend's body appear from under the cold snow, sitting on a chair. Not long after, the explorer seemed crazy and shot himself in the head with a gun. After hearing the story, Vuong and Hyo smirked. Kuang Fuang saw this and asked curiously. Why is that, why did Ko Wan the 63's body come out of the coffin by itself? Ho Si Ha remained silent for half a day before saying, let me tell you, it was because that explorer was sleepwalking. During the day, he buried that body, but at night he started sleepwalking and went out to dig up that body. Put him in a chair. Because he's the one who scared him. Kuang Fuang gasped, Oh, you mean to say that one of us is sleepwalking and hiding things in the closet? Ho Si Ha shook his head, because it's just a way of thinking, no one can guarantee it. But now that we know that the thief is this bookshelf, from now on we can just come straight here and get the things. Tran Ho Hui said, it can't stay like this forever. I think this house really has a mystery, should we report it everyone who heard the police report was surprised. Kuang Fuang glanced at him, 
report what if you have such a trivial matter, still report it so you think the police are leisurely and have nothing to do but solve cases like this wait a little longer, let's gather more information. Returning to my room, I felt lost and stood there stunned for half a day without knowing what to do. Sleepwalking or am I the sleepwalker that night, I dreamed again about a bookshelf that seemed to have grown four legs and walked back and forth on the balcony, then naturally entered everyone's rooms and rummaged through things. Several days passed. People gradually get used to the life of losing things every day. Because you just need to open the cabinet door to see it. Hosiha suggested selling or burying that bookshelf. Kuang Fuang objected, if we lose things again, where will we go to find them? The person who took the things is used to hiding things in the bookshelf, so we should follow suit. Especially when the five of us now have new habits. Daily habit of guessing what items are hidden in there. There are also times when items appear in the closet that have not been seen or used for a long time. Therefore, there are also many interesting surprises. Kuang Fuang once found an old wallet from her student days. His first lover gave him a souvenir. After the two broke up, Kuang Fuang burned all the things his lover gave him, leaving only the wallet that he regretfully kept. Memories of a bygone youth seemed to come back to life. He seemed sad, and took us all out drinking in the evening. At this point, the wardrobe seems to no longer be our trouble. But it is like a spice of life. Vuong and Hyo joked, but this bookshelf still doesn't have magical powers so great that if you know what people are looking for, it would be much more convenient to hide that thing in your stomach. But it has one bad point, it has a deep smell, a smell that feels like it's been buried underground for decades, and after trying all kinds of deodorizing methods, it can't get rid of it. I'm the only one who doesn't like that bookshelf, but that's not because I've never lost anything. But because I can't forget the eyes of that wooden statue. Although in my heart I have comforted myself more than a thousand times, more than ten thousand times. It's just paranoia, paranoia. The truth is those eyes that are so close are sometimes just imagination. Actually, what makes me uneasy is my nightly nightmares. Looking at the dark night, in a tight space, what is the feeling of a person convulsing like being in a coffin, but also allowing people to stretch their arms and legs, right until now. I never thought I had horror crisis syndrome. But ever since that night of nightmares and the nightmares that followed a few more times, I began to think I was having a mental health crisis. In the dream, sometimes I was locked in an iron box, sometimes pressed in a laundry bag, sometimes stuffed in a refrigerator. These are all places where putting people in is truly terrifying. One time I even discovered that I was locked in a computer, with a stranger in front of the computer screen. What is that stranger doing with the keyboard and the forbidden jacks without paying attention to my traces and signals but I never dreamed of the bookshelf again. I didn't feel reassured, but was still worried that one day the bookshelf would appear again, gaping and swallowing me inside. Before sleeping I tied one of my arms to the side of the bed. Test yourself to see if you're in love. When I woke up in the morning, the string was still there, but I still didn't feel secure, afraid that I had untied the string myself, and after falling asleep, I would wake up and tie it again. Just like Hosiha's story. I escaped to the hospital to check to see if I really had any illness the test results were that I was completely normal. If that's the case, I'll wear it too. Come out whatever you want. After being here for two months, we earned a profit and everyone was very happy, so we decided to go out somewhere for two days to change the atmosphere. Go online and find a place with beautiful scenery that's not too far from the city. It is very suitable to breathe fresh air and relax your mind there. Staying for two days in a wooden house in the middle of the forest, 
we gazed at endless flowers, green mountains, and blue waters. About to leave, we heard the news of a mountain collapse and got stuck in traffic. Temporarily the road is not open. The five of us did not hesitate, let's play for a few more days. Quang Fuang clapped her hands on the table, grilling goat meat sleeping in the forest today. At midnight, we sat by the fire and grilled goat meat. Because we don't have experience, the meat we grill will be raw if it doesn't burn. Luckily there was a fire otherwise it wouldn't have been fun, and eating and drinking aren't important anymore. Ho Si Ha brought a guitar. The sound of the guitar mixed with the melodious voices of the five of us is not very different from a group of cums. Tired of playing, tired of screaming, drinking all the beer and then each of us crawled into a sleeping bag that looked exactly like a banchung. I drank a lot of beer, my head felt heavy and my body felt lightheaded. I closed my eyes and fell asleep. A while later I smelled that stench again. Am I locked in a bookshelf again I immediately woke up and tried to move my arms and legs. That's right, I'm really locked in a bookshelf. But strangely enough, the rotten smell still lingers. I noticed something soft, slimy, and hairy right next to my waist. What is this this time, I was no longer as confused as the last time, because I also knew that this was just a delusion. There's a little fear, but there's a lot of not knowing how to get out of this stinking mess. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and a strong force pulled the door open. Who very quickly the door was opened, and moonlight followed into the room. Under the moonlight, I looked in horror at those eyes filled with murderous intent. This look is familiar, it seems like I've seen it somewhere. It is a wooden statue. The rough wooden statue stared at me from outside the door. A malicious and cold look. The eyes were white but had a hint of waiting. I wanted to scream but couldn't make a sound. As if I wanted to move, I couldn't move even a single hair. That wooden statue looked at me like a cat looking at a mouse drooling. What do you want I felt like my heart was about to explode. At dawn, the wooden statue also disappeared, and the stench also disappeared. There was only moonlight in the water shining everywhere. Have I woken up so why can't my arms and legs move suddenly I remembered that I was lying in a sleeping bag and couldn't help but laugh and mock myself. My whole body was sweating, making the bag wet. I couldn't sleep anymore. I lazily stood up and went to the campfire, which was too dark. I blew on the group and the fire flared up. I lay next to the fire to dry my sweat. The sky is bright, the road is clear. We are back on track. All along the way the four of them were constantly laughing and joking. Only I silently leaned back in the chair and nodded my head like a chicken pecking rice to show my agreement with the story. Arrived home around 3 p.m. As soon as I reached the stairs, I saw flyers everywhere looking for lost dogs. It turned out that the neighbor's dog that had been raised for more than four years was missing. Looking at the missing time, it was the night we went on a picnic. This dog is very obedient, very loyal to its owner, becoming an indispensable member of the family. Suddenly disappearing makes the homeowner somewhat panicked. Dog looking flyer printed in color. The top has the very clear words Lubby the dog's name. It seems that the homeowner is very eager to find the dog because it is clearly written below, a cash reward of 20,000 yuan. With that amount of money, we can feed five mouths. Quang Fuang jokingly said, let's not go home anymore, immediately go find that dog. If we find it, we can take a break for two months. But among us, no one thought that the dog was really found by us. Vuong and Hu inserted the key into the lock, suddenly frowned and said, Is there a strange smell in the room? The four of us walked in and immediately smelled a strange smell. 
like something is rotten. Quang Fuang asked, do we have mice in our house, could it be that we were away for a few days and the rats starved to death? It's hard to say. Ho Si Ha said, what if it could be the mouse that still steals our things? As soon as he finished speaking, we remembered. They all looked out onto the balcony. Opening the balcony door, the stench was indeed overwhelming. Without thinking, we both looked at the bookshelf as if we felt there was something hidden. I felt like I felt cold in my limbs, remembering last night's dream, thinking about that soft, hairy, sticky towel around my waist that gave off a strong towel smell. But it's not real. Opening the closet door, a fishy smell immediately filled the room. Tran Ho Hui covered his mouth and rushed straight into the bathroom. The Lufa was lying in the cupboard, its tongue stuck out and its eyes wide open, its whole body rotting and leaking yellow liquid. Its owner cannot live with it anymore. How sad. The dog is locked in a bookshelf. The four of us covered our noses. Tran Ho Hui, after pouring out all his intestines and vomiting, his face was still pale. The five of us silently looked at each other, not knowing what to say. How is that possible I was just dreaming? How can this be true first of all, I think we have to get rid of the dog's body. Quang Fuang said and immediately started looking for rags, toilet paper, and plastic bags. Wait a minute. Do you want to be caught? Vuong and Hua grabbed his hand and shouted. Rotten like this will definitely be discovered. And if the dog's owner finds out, no matter what, he will be charged with the crime of killing someone else's dog. Quang Fuang obviously the bookshelf killed it, what do we have to do with it? Vuong and Hua who believes you my bookshelf knows how to steal things on its own, are you planning on letting people take you to a mental hospital? And that makes sense. We covered up with masks and cleaned up. The body was carefully stuffed into a plastic bag many times, intending to leave it until dark before burying it. After cleaning, Quang Fuang lamented, fortunately it was a dog, but if it were a human life. We were all stunned. Ho Si Ha if it was a real person, how could it fit in such a small place? Hearing those words, cold air ran through my body from my arms and legs to the top of my head. So why was I locked up just now inside? I racked my brain and immediately thought of the scenes from my two nightmares. I seemed to be curled up very round, but even a circus performer couldn't be any rounder. Oh my god, my arms and legs were all chopped off. Thrown in there next to Vuong and Hu was criticizing Quang Fuang. Only random talk, what if there really was someone stuffed in there? How horrifying was that hypothesis? At that time, there was only one thing. The only thing I can confirm is that losing things every now and then has nothing to do with sleepwalking as mentioned. Because we are all far away, looking at the sky and the earth. At midnight, like a thief, we took the body downstairs and threw it in the trash. Tran Ho Hui also carefully threw a few more trash bags on top to cover the body. Whether the flea was discovered later or not, we don't know. But inside we were all haunted and scared that we didn't know what more terrifying items could appear in that bookshelf. After discussion with the whole group, we decided to throw away the bookshelf. After trying our best to carry it away, we all realized that the bookshelf was nailed very well. If you want to remove it, it will take a lot of effort. Ho Si Ha lamented, this old man is really crazy. Quang Fuang was very angry, damn it, cut it to pieces. Sure enough, he didn't know where he found the axe, so he stomped towards the bookshelf. Vuong and Hua called out, be careful. I didn't expect the bookshelf to be so slow. Quang Fuang slash left only small, faint traces. The sound was deafening, 
because the wooden cabinet was too hard, the axe was thrown out and fell right to the leg, blood gushing out, a big and deep wound that fortunately did not reach the bone. We hurriedly took him to the hospital, got him 20 stitches, returned home without saying a word to anyone and no one dared to touch that bookshelf again. Quang Fuang was still not convinced, in that case, burn it in the sarcophagus. Vuong and Hyu shook his head, stop it, if you don't burn it carefully, the whole house will burn down. This bookshelf is truly magical. Should we find someone to ask? I joined in maybe the neighbors around can tell us something about the old man in this house. We knocked on a few neighbors doors, but every time we heard about house 402 and the old man who owned it, they all showed unsympathetic expressions and said nothing more. There was an old woman who, when she slammed the door shut, cursed, unlucky type. We are very disappointed. It seems that the son did not dare to stay with his father and could not provide us with any more information. We just signed a new contract to paint a set of astronomy paintings. The workload was huge, we worked so hard, no one had time to learn more about the bookshelf and the old man. Every day when I open the closet door, I feel very nervous and not as comfortable as before. I'm just afraid there might be a dog or some other dead animal in there. But a week passed without anything terrible happening. One thing that surprised us greatly was that in just one night the rotting smell of flesh completely disappeared. What miracle is this every night before going to bed I am extremely worried and afraid of dreams. Couldn't sleep all night, tired, mentally depressed. Lying on the bed, my head began to wonder, what is going on with the bookshelf what is it going to do although it's a silly question, I still don't understand the appearance of everything in the bookcase. It can be said that it has no regulations, no purpose at all. It's like being a blind person. In the pile of things, he freely took any item without caring what he took. Perhaps it was also intentional. I think watches, socks, perfume, phones, even dogs have some use for bookshelves not at all, not even a small part of the effect. But for the owners of those items, lacking them causes them many difficulties, even suffering, poor Lutva, but the bookshelf knows nothing about our misfortunes. It also seems to enjoy it, swallowing things and then having them all taken out, once taken out, it mercilessly stuffs something else back in. A mixed bookshelf of tragedy and comedy. The irony made me unable to help but want to laugh out loud but failed. But it's also possible that this bookshelf just likes to possess it. Because no matter what it is, it will stuff it all into its empty stomach to feel at peace. That explains why the items in the bookcase are so wasteful, it really doesn't matter what they are. I remember what Lutun Wen said about a strange monster who carried everything he encountered on his shoulders. It doesn't matter whether it's wood, gravel, or someone else's belongings. Each additional item feels like an additional burden. This bookshelf isn't that greedy, is it how can we appease it I suddenly thought, should I just ignore the bookshelf and not care about the contents of the drawer anymore, then one day the bookshelf will burst because it's too full if so, the bookshelf can be thrown away. But I don't know when it will be full to that extent. Especially when lost belongings need to be found again to use. The bookshelf will have a chance to laugh at us. So that old man is so resigned not sure if he made this cabinet himself. If he hadn't passed away, I'd have to ask. That afternoon, after struggling for many days, we also delivered the order's batch of oil. The customer's reaction was very satisfactory, only a few pages needed minor changes. The weather outside was also very nice, we were all in a very happy mood, the whole group went down to the campus to sit and breathe some fresh air. Right on the weekend, the whole campus was full of people. 
children roller skating competed with each other and laughed, their joy spreading to the whole group. Life seems more beautiful. The story of the bookshelf made us very tired. So now take advantage of the relaxation under this beautiful sunshine. But before long, the topic of conversation was the bookshelf. Are we going to let this situation continue forever? Vuong and Hu lamented, dying a dog is one thing, but I'm afraid that one day one of them will appear. There was no need to finish the sentence, everyone seemed to understand. Quang Fuang looked down at her wound, said nothing but her eyes were full of hatred, raising her head to look in all directions. Lifeless look. What's wrong with you? Tran Ho Hui saw that Quang Fuang's facial expression seemed unusual. Following his gaze, he saw the thin appearance of a middle-aged man. Quang Fuang when we first moved in, that man proactively greeted me and warned me in advance about this house. Maybe he will tell us something. The thin man was very friendly, and as soon as he asked, he couldn't stop talking. The old man who used to live here was very lonely, even though he had lived here for many years, he never interacted with the neighbors. Every few days I go out to buy things. Normally his face is very serious and cold, so no one comes close to him. Later I found out that he was not like everyone thought, he liked to lock himself in the house all day. One time, someone had something to do and came home late. He happened to see an old man using a flashlight to dig through the trash. Neighbors thought he was not measuring carefully and threw the wrong item into the trash and tried to come help him find it, but saw his frantic appearance and quickly ran upstairs. The neighbor looked at the pile of trash and saw that it was full of miscellaneous bottles and jars. Putting together the chain of events, Everyone guessed that the old man was picking up trash not because of lack of money but because of his hobby of collecting old things. As a human being, it's okay to sometimes act abnormally, as long as it doesn't affect the people around you. But the old man became more and more excessive, he started taking other people's things. Everyone behind his back said he was mentally ill. He never took money, but whenever a house left empty flowers or an empty birdcage, the old man immediately took it. The balcony on the first floor has a clothes drying rack. If he could take it, he probably wouldn't forgive him. I also know that those things are not worth the money, but such actions make people angry. When I went to the police, it didn't make sense for the baby to be torn apart, so everyone was even more upset. Then one day, while he was taking the plastic tub, the homeowner discovered it, the homeowner was a talkative middle-aged woman. She couldn't say anything reasonable and scolded him like he was a man with a buffalo head and a horse's face. Making the old man embarrassed, he was so embarrassed that he wanted to jump off the building. The woman caught up and stood right in front of the door, screaming loudly, everyone gathered to listen. When the incident ended, the old man felt embarrassed and did not appear again for a long time. It wasn't until the end of last month that the group of residents who came to collect electricity and water bills several times but no one was home realized that the old man had left home. We patiently sat and listened to this thin man talk endlessly. We were very nervous when we heard the part about the old man's eccentric habits. Wang Fuang couldn't help but interrupted and asked, What did you tell me to prevent you from encountering evil? Thin man I'm about to tell you, starting from the day the old man returned. A few days later he returned with a bookshelf on a cargo truck, the poorly skilled driver was crashed into a bicycle. Many people witnessed the battle between right and left. After resolving the car crash, the old man asked a worker to carry an old bookshelf up to the house, everyone thought the old man had pulled the book again. But the old man cherished it very much, constantly calling for workers to carry it carefully to the fourth floor. Be careful. If you scratch this cabinet, 
you won't be able to pay for it. The old man raised his voice. From that day, his life also changed, no one saw him scavenge or steal things anymore. Although he lived a closed life, occasionally, when leaving the house, anyone who sees him will see that his face is very good, very bright, no longer showing any gloominess. Saying this, the man lowered his voice, his face showing fear. I think he found a spooky bookshelf to help him steal. The five of us looked at each other in shock. Hosiha stammered, why did you guess that? The man said, the country is easy to change, nature is difficult to change. That old man, who is so used to stealing and stealing, does not easily let go of his sword. Especially everyone has noticed that since he had the bookshelf, his spirit has been very good. Well, because the goal is achieved, that's why. We could only look at each other. That man continued, after that, my house and the surrounding neighbors still lost things, all three things related to birds, dogs, etc., which were not worth taking away. Very suitable for his hobby, what else? His voice whispered, two months later I heard the old man crying. That night the air conditioner in my house broke. It's too hot to sleep, so go out to the balcony and get some fresh air. He heard a very clear cry coming from house 402. In the quiet night that cry could be heard clearly. The old man cried, it's over. I was killed by you. Screamed like that twice and then fell silent. The next morning I began to pay more attention to him. In just one night, he had aged 10 years, his face had deteriorated miserably, and he turned away every time he met someone. After a few days, nearly half of his gray hair fell out. Another night, I heard him crying again, but nothing happened. What a pity, what a pity. Quang Fuang frowned and asked, what does that mean? The man was pleased, I'm not sure, but maybe the bookshelf has a problem to scare him, afraid of being killed. But if he tried to destroy the bookshelf, he would regret it. A month later that old man died. When he went out to buy things, when he came back from afar, he heard the loud roar of a fire truck. His face turned pale, he dropped all the things in his hand and ran towards his house. This 60-year-old man ran 500 meters to the bottom of the stairs and saw a crowd of people. Firefighters are trying their best to put water out to put out the fire so it doesn't fly into the air. The old man was so shocked and desperate that he had a heart attack and fainted. An hour later he died in hospital. I heard the last sentence he said was. My. It's on fire. It's over. Specifically, no one can hear anything clearly about me. In fact, the fire that day was house 503, a house above the old man's house, there was so much smoke but the fire was not big. There was nothing wrong with the old man's house. The man asked us, since the day we moved in, have we seen the bookshelf play any spooky tricks? Before Quang Fuang could speak, I said, we moved in and saw it was in trouble so we asked the landlord to take it away. The thin man didn't know if he was happy or desperate. That's good, then I won't have to worry about what happens anymore. It's all over. I was killed by you. I was dizzy, only that sentence echoed in my head. What about us will we also be harmed to death that day? Hosiha woke up early to take a shower and saw that the water heater was broken. The homeowner also politely said that the water heater had been used for a long time and should be changed. He spent money to replace it with a new one. By the way, come see how we live. Suddenly the worker finished installing and left. The homeowner stayed and talked with us for half a day, visiting all the rooms. Entering Vuong and Hyo's room, 
What immediately caught his eye was a wooden statue that made him freeze. Vuong and Hu asked, What's wrong? The homeowner stammered, This is my father's statue. Vuong and Hu felt ringing in his ears and then stood still. It turned out that the statue thrown away in the bookcase was the old man of the house. This is a statue that he carved himself, the homeowner explained, adding that his father had previously studied art but was only of intermediate skill. Vuong and Hu told the homeowner he could take the statue away. But the homeowner seemed uncomfortable. Well, I won't bring it back. If you like it, just keep it. If you don't like it, just throw it away. The homeowner left, five faces looked at each other. Quang Fuang changed the quiet atmosphere. What a devil! It's very possible that that wooden statue is the heart of the problem, the root of the problem. Before he died, the old man was very miserable, not because of the bookshelf but because of the statue. I didn't say anything, I was covered in cold sweat from head to toe. Under the moonlight, the bookshelf door was wide open. The wooden statue blocking the door looked straight at me as if it wanted to rip out my eyeballs. Let's burn it, Quang Fuang said loudly, burn it, take the statue to the bathroom and pour gasoline on it. The five of us surrounding us were all tense. Finally, Quang Fuang lit a match and threw it into the statue. The fire burned and filled the whole house with smoke. Tran Ho Hui immediately ran out and turned on the smoke machine. The statue gradually turned black and shriveled. We are very nervous, burning the statue and not knowing if it will really have any effect. I suddenly shouted it smiling. It's smiling at me. I was not dizzy. I was completely awake and saw the statue looking straight at me with a grin. I returned the favor and smiled. In the blink of an eye, a strong electric current reached its peak and I slowly passed out. Ho Siha grabbed me, what's wrong with you? As if I had found a solution, I calmed down and took one last look at the statue. Now the statue has burned to pieces. On the brick floor, only ashes remained. So the statue that has made us uneasy for so long has now been completely resolved. Deep down, we don't feel completely secure because of that. The bookshelf is still there, God knows what's going to happen. The next morning, Ho Siha went to the post office to receive the parcel. The four of us all woke up early to sit outside in the living room, but all of us, whether intentionally or unintentionally, avoided the balcony, even though we still knew there was nowhere to avoid it. Vuong and Hyo sighed and stood up, let's go, we can't avoid it forever. He walked in front of the door, we followed. Looking at the outside of the bookshelf, it's still the same, there's no way to guess what's inside this time. Vuong and Hyo took a deep breath and opened the door. Everyone looked on. There is no furniture at all. Just very small pieces of metal, no one can guess what they are. I picked it up and looked at it suspiciously, it's a large pile of shredded pieces of metal, it's hard to guess what it is. Tran Ho Hui frowned, holding the thickest piece of metal in his hand. There's a carved pattern on this. Buong and Hyo found a pair of gloves and immediately jumped into digging. We also noticed not only metal pieces but also plastic bags, glue, and all kinds of debris. Even the electrical wires were cut into pieces. What game is this again we're all in chaos? There was the sound of a door opening outside. It was Ho Siha who went to the state. Seeing a pile of scrap metal, he looked at it for a while before asking, what game is this? Vuong and Hu replied, everyone is guessing. He examined the situation of the pile of items of unknown origin and picked up a talisman. On the talisman there is a small bell and four words piece on the road are engraved. Where are the most abundant talismans like this Ho Cha I know? 
everyone watching him only saw his face as a blank sheet of paper. On my way home today, I met a couple arguing with the security guard. Hosiha's voice sank, their Audi parked in the car park has evaporated. The five of us felt like they were stuck in concrete. It's so random, but it's so silly. This time it's a really full car, not tofu. How can it do that how that's not right, that drawer is too small. If you cut that Audi into pieces, you wouldn't be able to fit it all into 10 drawers. Right. Quang Fuang quickly responded, if that car could fit into our living room, it would probably fit. Vuong and Hu anyway, let's clean it up and figure it out. Still the old way, throw it away at midnight. The old way, this is hard to hear, but there's no other way. Quang Fuang surely no one can recognize the shape of the car anymore, don't be afraid. Vuong and Hu just clean it up first, if it's not done yet there's a real problem. Under the bed there were a few cardboard boxes that we wanted to take out to dump HG debris into. After cleaning it out for a while, we saw that this cupboard was like a bottomless cupboard. I've scooped out so much but it's still not gone. Four barrels were full. Quang Fuang found it unusual. I said, how much can this antique thing hold I've been working all night and haven't seen any decrease and it should have been cleaned up already. Vuong and Hu let's contact. I want to see how much it can hold. The whole group dug in again, the more they dug, the more they found. The balcony was crowded and then spilled out into the living room. They even separated the fragments from which parts. We found a family photo. Few people usually leave photos on their cars, so the car owner probably always wants their family to be happy. What is the actual capacity of this bookshelf? I remember the old days when I went to see magic tricks, there were so many things that the magician created from a tiny box that made the viewers extremely impressed. But this is real, not magic. Vuong and Hyo okay, don't waste any more effort. It's not wrong. The cupboard has crushed an entire car. Let's wait until midnight, then we can both pack and shovel. Crush the whole thing. Quang Fuang it has never swallowed anything so big before. Ho Si Ha's face turned pale, he stammered, maybe I'll get retribution for burning that wooden statue. Everyone was thoughtful. Late at night, we set out to throw away that pile of scrap metal. The five of us took turns doing it and felt worried all along the way for fear of being discovered. Having to dump a garbage car from the fourth floor into a house in the middle of the night is so trashy that I still can't imagine anything crazier. Finally clean, we lay flat all the time, everyone was sweating profusely. If it's bright, everyone will find out. Vuong and Hu a mountain of scrap suddenly grows around here that even a crazy person would be curious about. Ho Si Ha the owner of this car will definitely call us perverts when he sees the pile of scrap metal. Quang Fuang sighed, oh my god, why didn't they lose a Matty but an Audi? I speak softly. Tran Ho Hui let's move house. I can't stay here another day, this place is full of nightmares. Everyone agreed, I will go online to find information. No conditions are needed Vuong and Hu as long as we get out of here as quickly as possible. Good. I found a few addresses, immediately went with Tran Ho Hui to see the house, the two of us couldn't sleep all night, our eyes were dark. Next door was a karaoke room that was noisy all night asking how we could if you can sleep, can you live Tran Ho Hui shouted loudly. I warned them, seeing the security team, calling 110 won't solve anything. Next month will be very busy, there's no time to eat and rest. Yes, at this rate we will die. I just want to quickly escape from that place. A part of people are really unconscious. The homeowner just listened and agreed, 
where does social civilization come from? Then the homeowner hurriedly said, the room is prepared. It's ready, you two make a deposit, you can move in right away, the remaining money will be paid at the end of the month. We both accepted and immediately called Buong and Hyo to contact the moving company. The moving company paid the time was too tight and we couldn't arrange it in time. If we wanted to move right away, we would have to add money. If we didn't come back for a day or two, we would definitely have a car. We started packing and it took a day and a night. Too tiring. We took the opportunity to sleep for a while. Finally, we could leave behind all these rags. Throwing away those haunted items, we didn't regret anything, as long as we had a new life, nothing else was important. As I did, I thought, what does the existence of this bookshelf represent possession torn desire despair it is just an expression of purpose without thought, without motive, without bring results. What is the relationship between this bookshelf and its owner is the old man just the one who created it did sacrificing the bookshelf make the old man who he is as for why the old man carved the wooden statue like that and put it in the bookshelf, I don't understand. As I was thinking, the door was pushed open and Hoseha rolled in, scaring me, he was tied up. Hoseha gestured towards bookshelf bookshelf I had a hunch that something was wrong. I rushed up to the balcony and immediately saw Vuong and Hyo standing there, her face pale and her eyes frightened. The bookshelf makes the sound of crushing food. We saw the bookshelf eating food for the first time. Tran Ho Hui suddenly remembered that the movie Long Quan Fong also has a scene where the monster eats anything it sees, in its stomach is a collection of all kinds of wild animals. The sound emanating from the bookshelf has gradually subsided, whereas the stench is getting stronger and stronger. The fishy taste of blood rose up. We were all scared, our hearts stopped beating. What's in it no one dared to open up to see what was going on. Finally, Vuong and Hyo said, even if you hide, you can't escape. Just have to open it and see. The door is opened. In it was the body of a man. All four limbs had been severed, all internal organs were protruding bloody. Suddenly I thought about myself breaking a doll's arms and legs. When I measured it, I just thought of doing so to see what the shape of a doll without arms and legs would look like. Indeed, after being chopped into many pieces, a snake is not very big. On the balcony there is now only the wind and we are facing the corpse. What should we do Hoseha pulled out his phone and started dialing numbers. Buong and Hyo grabbed the phone and shouted, what are you going to do? Hoseha called 110. He grabbed the phone and still wanted to call. You are crazy. Buong and Hyo slapped Hoseha painfully. On this bookshelf there are only our fingerprints. All night when we go in and out to clean the house, the neighbors will see it. They will do it and we won't get away with it. How will you explain to the police or tell them that my house has a bookcase that likes to eat meat and crush things? If you were the police, would you believe it? Hosi Hayaka sat on the ground, covering his face with both hands, in complete despair. Kuang Fuang was scared, what should I do now? Buong and Hyo we pull out the body, then throw it away. Tran Ho Hui what we do is illegal. Buong and Hyo if the police come, we will become the culprits. Tran Ho Hui was silent, no one else said anything. The body was packed very tightly, I used all my strength to pull it out. We all know this man's body, he was still talking to us a few days ago. That's the skinny, talkative man. But now after being disfigured by the bookshelf, it is difficult for anyone to recognize him. The five of us were drenched in sweat, cold to every pore. We fear that the bookshelf is taking revenge. So what will happen to us before, 
we still wondered why in action movies, people always have to stab and slash. Now we understand. This skeleton was indeed too hard for an axe, a hammer, the only property left by the old man of the house, we could not cut off those wobbly joints. The five of us locked ourselves in the room. At first, every time we smelled blood, we vomited. By now my stomach is empty, there's nothing left to vomit, and I'm getting used to the smell of blood. There are people who kill people, kill acquaintances, and then feel satisfied. The body was finally cleaned up. Everything in the house that could be contained was pulled out and stuffed inside. There was a small lake on the campus so we took the body out, tied it up and threw it down. What should I do in the house with this strong smell ho see ha the smell won't go away even after a month. I opened all the windows and sprayed perfume everywhere. But this mixture of smells makes them even worse. I feel more nauseous. Let it go away on its own. Buong and Hyo this room is still far from the duty room, for the time being no one will come. But the cleaning company workers are about to arrive. We'll do it ourselves, Buong and Hyo said. We've thrown away what we don't need, and we can move the rest down the stairs before the workers arrive. Now go take a shower to wash away this filth. Ho see ha if so, just go into the cupboard for a moment and it will help you evaporate cleanly. Buong and Hyo touched her face and her face changed, why didn't you say it earlier? That was the most painful afternoon that the five of us encountered. Excessive effort, excessive fear, almost all of us were seriously injured. Perhaps it was because we were so tired that as soon as we arrived at the new house, Without even having time to spread the bed sheets, we immediately fell asleep. But this sleep can now help us solve many problems. Like that bookshelf, does it still chew things was the body discovered by anyone were we arrested on suspicion of murder all this is temporarily unthinkable. Get some sleep, at least it's a rare moment of rest. Before going to bed, Quang Fuang whispered to everyone, I'm having a nightmare, wake up quickly. Both my spirit and my being were so depressed that I gave up on everything. After a while, I concentrated again and saw the bookshelf. But it's not the usual bookshelf. It's a giant bookshelf as big as a building. The wind blew the door open. The shadow came closer to me and I saw more clearly. That was the old man, but he really looked like a statue. He raised his hand as if inviting me inside. I didn't think twice and followed him inside. The first time I looked closely, inside this bookshelf with many compartments looked like a large building with many rooms and many apartments. Each compartment is a different item. I asked the old man, why do you have to make so many compartments, and how many things do you plan to keep? Thinking about it, I once watched a horror movie where people get lost in a maze. If they go the wrong way, they face suicide. Are not, why? Old man can you escape your inner feelings? Immediately I understood, I couldn't escape. The old man disappeared, the bookshelf slowly became smaller. I woke up from the coma but the strange smell inside the closet still haunted me. I heard what sounded like human footsteps. Who else is walking around in the middle of the night like this I felt my heart jump out when I saw the closet approaching. At this point, Buongdo stopped. The surrounding was quiet, no one of us dared to go out, his ghost story achieved great success. Especially when I turned on the light and saw two girls with bloodless faces. He became even more proud. We sat and talked for a while longer. It was getting late, everyone went back to their room to rest. Buong Dung and Ha Tutin are on the bottom floor. Having to send them back to their room, Ha Tutin felt uneasy after hearing the story and couldn't hide her curiosity, is the bookshelf still following you? Of course, 
I can't throw it away, it's still in my room, do you want to come into my room to look, maybe you'll find something special that was lost. After speaking, he laughed loudly. Hot Yudin pursed her lips and tapped him on the head, you have no use for anything other than making fun of others. At night, are you still laughing like this do you have no conscience left? There's no one else here besides the ghosts that stay up at night. They've all moved out. Who should I threaten? Isn't the old landlord's soul still following you be careful of alarming him and you'll be crushed into powder. After speaking, she smiled mischievously and left the room. The two wished each other good night. Vuong though walked back to his room. Even though he made up a story to tell everyone, when he was alone, walking in the middle of this empty hallway, he felt terrible, walking quickly back to his room. Dizzy, something on the floor was moving. Looking closely, it turned out to be his own shadow. Stop, turn around, look up at the swaying light bulb, the staircase door is open, the cold wind whistles. Who is that coming home this late and not closing the door? How can there be no draft the wind is cold like this and closing the door to block the wind, even if that happens, you don't even know, what a thing. His mouth was muttering. Murmured, just closing the door. He walked a few more steps and looked back at the emergency exit. Why was it usually closed tightly but today it was wide open the iron door was sharp and sharp, inside was smoke, and there was a bad premonition. End of chapter 1. See you again in the next chapter. Thank you for taking the time to watch Ghost Stories video. Hopefully the content has brought you interesting and meaningful moments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Ghost Stories YouTube channel to follow the channel's next videos. See you in the next video. Have a good day.